Hello there and many thanks for joining us on the program, People, Politics and Power. I am Mimoni Amarere. The rains are here and have been coming with gusty winds. Relevant government authorities in Nigeria have predicted that there will be more rain than in 2022, while warning of a significant risk of intense and widespread heavy flooding across the 36 states and the federal capital territory of Nigeria during this rainy season. According to the Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency, the flood outlook released in February, 178 local government areas in 36, 32 states and the federal capital territory fall within the highly probable flood risk areas. Similarly, 224 local government areas, including the federal capital territory, are within the moderately probable flood risk areas, while the remaining 373 local government areas are said to fall within the probable flood risk areas. In the assessment of the hydrological agency, 16 states in the southern part of the country will face high threat of flooding, while 13 states in the north will face a similar threat between the months of April and November. The level of flood is expected to be high in terms of impact on the population, on agriculture, livelihoods, livestock, infrastructure, and of course, the environment. The authorities say communities will experience one type of flood or a combination of different types of flood, depending on the local geography. They include coastal flooding, flash flooding, urban flooding, and riverine flooding. These are the uh, four different types of flooding that are usually very pronounced in Nigeria. Nigerians will not forget in a hurry the widespread devastation, the destruction and misery caused by floods in 2012 and in 2022, when many vulnerable communities experienced what was described then as unprecedented flooding. About 600 lives and thousands of homes and farmlands were lost in the 2022 incident with over 2.5 million persons displaced from their homes or their natural habitats. The National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, has emphasized the relevance of early preparedness and response to the impending risk by governments at every level. Now, against the backdrop of the fact that most communities are yet to recover fully from the 2022 floods, what short and long-term measures are being put in place to avoid a bigger disaster in 2023? What should vulnerable communities do to protect themselves? And what kind of assistance can Nigeria seek externally to curb this national and natural and man-made menace called flooding. These are the issues we will be looking at today and hopefully since our program is aimed at the well-being and welfare of the people, we will be looking at how uh, the vulnerable communities in different parts of Nigeria, north, south, east and west, can indeed be protected from the predicted flooding in 2023. When we return from this short break, we will meet our resource persons who are right here in the studio. Stay with us. All right, thank you so much for staying with us. Let's get to meet our guest analysts who are right here in the studio. Uh, first from my uh, right is uh, Engineer Clement Nze. Uh, Engineer Nze is a Director General, Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency. Engineer, thank you so much for thank finding you. time to join us. It's my pleasure to be here. All right. Thanks. Also joining us is Oluwa Shewunwe Fred Idou, 
Uh, Mr. Dou is the technical assistant to the Director General of the Nigerian Meteorological Agency, NIMET. Thank you so much, Mr. Dou. Thank you so much for having me. All right. So, engineers, let, let, let's begin uh, with what your agency says will be the outlook for this year in terms of flooding. But perhaps before we do that, let's look at the, the weather forecast for the for the year or what it, it, it is going to look like from the uh, perspective of NIMET, which, are the, which is the agency that is actually uh, uh, looking at and predicting uh, the, the weather for, for us. Yeah. Uh, you would recall that earlier in the year, uh, specifically in January, uh, we went on here uh, through the Honorable Minister of Aviation to do what we call early warning. Uh, because we are living in the age and times whereby the value of early warning is huge because it allows you to prepare ahead of time and then be able to avert losses. And in that prediction, uh, we told Nigerians that largely, largely, uh, in 2023, we are going to have normal to above normal rainfall. That doesn't mean that in some locations you could have normal rainfall or below. But on a larger scale, it's going to be normal to above normal. W rainfall. What is considered normal? Uh, what is considered normal means that it won't deviate from what you are used to. What is supposed to happen in a season, mm. that is normal. But when you now have above normal, it means that you are going to get higher than expected. And when you talk in terms of rainfall amount, that is huge. Mm. It means that if you're normally you have a 50 liter of container uh, but we are saying that you are going to have 70 it means that your container may not be able to contain that is higher than normal Do or perhaps too. if you have 50 uh, and your normal is 30 and we say it's going to be 40 even though you can see your container can still contain it but it is still above normal so that is generally the outlook mm. for the country for the year 2023. So we're looking at normal and above normal. Normal, yes. Right. Yes. And is, is this going to be, will be in every part of the country or some parts will be more prone uh, it to cut across normal and above normal? It cut across all parts of the country, mm. but more pronounced in the northern part of the country. I be it that the season may even end early. So which means that you have a lot of volume falling within a very short period of time. That is scary if actions are not taken to be able to accommodate this volume of water that is coming. Mm. So, and that is the essence of early warning. Can, can, can we quantify these volumes in terms of the rainfall, in terms of figures, say for instance, uh, what is the expected volume and what would be an abnormal volume? Yes, I, I may not be exact at this point. Yes. Why? Because for it varies from state to state across, even within the same belt, a state can have a higher volume than another state. Largely across the north, it's usually less than uh, 1,000 millimeters of rainfall for the whole season. However, in the southern part of the country, you can have as high as 3,000, sometimes 4,000, depending on where you are in the southern part of the country. So when we now talk in terms of above normal, it means that you are going to get volumes higher than these values that I've mentioned. And it's, it, it has a lot of implication, especially if you are not prepared. So in, in terms of the volume of rainfall we had in 2022, and what is expected or anticipated in 2023, will, will, will it be uh, some kind of equilibrium, so to say, will there be uh, s some synergy or there will there be a lot more in 2023? Well, for the first half of the, of, of the year, you may have a lot more than what you have in 2022. However, towards the latter part of the year, we're expecting that in some locations, the season may end early, which means that the volume may not be as high as it was in the previous year. But you know, this is a prediction, and we continue to monitor the forecast as the year progresses. And once we observe that there is going to be a significant change, we come back 
to tell Nigerians that this is where we are And these to. predictions are usually scientific. Absolutely. Anyway. They are not off the head or <laughs> off the cuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So, uh, and in 2022, we had quite some devastation as a result of uh, very heavy rainfall, much more than what we had in 2021, 2020, for instance. Uh, perhaps the only time we could measure uh, some comparison was in 2012. Yeah, yes. Uh, some, some 10 years before yes. and then 2022 there was this very huge uh, devastation that it caused in many parts of the country uh, here again in 2023 we're saying we should expect something near that or even above that so what 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 uh, he has talked about the early warnings and uh, early warnings are very key to prepare preparations for what to expect uh, from your agency's perspective, what should Nigerians expect, where and how? Okay, thank you so much for all the details and uh, also what has come out from NIMED. The, the two agents that are at the federal level that talk about uh, implications of weather came out much earlier this year than previously. NIMED came on uh, 24th of uh, January to tell the world what we are likely to expect in Nigeria in 2023. Less than a month after 17th of February, the Nigeria Health Service Agency also went on air. So these are this early warning is expected to be accompanied with early action by the subnationals to ensure that uh, we, we, we do the needful before the rains actually set in. The like we mentioned, 2012 and 2022. 2022, so much exceeded what we had in 2012. And uh, what we call in hydrology, what we call return interval. Return interval is a, the period within which certain flood, magnitude of flood, returns again. So that may be about 100 years. Like it was said that that 2012 flood incident was a it had a 100-year return interval in terms of when it occurred last, or what is meant to that in Nigeria. But because of the reality of climate change, within uh, even 2018, we had something very close to 2012. Then in 2022, which was 10 years after, we, we saw what happened in Nigeria. Now, when we give these predictions, is a scientific approach we use, like, among the things we use in doing the prediction, the rainfall amount predicted by NIMET is one input data we use in running our system. We, we talk about the geology of Nigeria. We know the entire ge geology of Nigeria. Some areas are sedimentary, sand, more or less. Some are basement complex, rocky environments. So these are some of the things we look at all those things. The river system, we measure the entire rivers in Nigeria. It was Niger and Benue, right from their you know, origins down to when they enter into the Atlantic Ocean. And all the tributaries. So we have measurements where we collect data on daily basis. We also look at the, the, the land use pattern in Nigeria. So these are a whole gamut of uh, um, data we use to do the prediction. And once it is released, the Honorable Minister of Water Resources, Ginger Suleiman Adam, usually informs the site governors in writing, letting each of them to know in their, in their states, these are names of local government areas in your state that will suffer or likely to suffer severe flooding. And we tell you the period it is likely to happen. What that are heavy, highly, highly probable, and then moderately probable, and then less probable. We detail all those things in writing. Uh, as well as we attach the document I have here, letters are written specifying those particular local, local government areas and sent to the, the governors for them to also cascade information to the citizens. So early action, sorry, warning is supposed to be accompanied by early action by everybody to avert what happened in 2022 to occur again in Nigeria. Mm. This information, uh, you don't send it to the local government chairman 
or local, gov local government authorities. It goes to state governments. And some state governments, as we saw in 2012 and in 2022, do not cascade this information down the line. And so uh, many, many people, many communities are caught on our ways. You see, this has been the issue we've been speaking against. The fact that this gets to the state government, they dump it there. We have three tiers of government in Nigeria. At the federal level, where the forecasting agencies are, I think they are doing their best to, to raise alarm as early as possible to allow the nation. And then the chief executives in the states are informed. In every state in Nigeria, you have a state emergency management agency. You have development control or time planning authorities. You have state ministers of water resources, ministers of environment, in virtually each of, the, each of the states in Nigeria. What stops the state government, just as the during campaign, they had they go to the, to the last uh, community in the states to do their campaign? They should utilize the, the, the machinery they already have at the state level to cascade this information to the local government and from there we have, we have councillors. So uh, we expected that this, the, this should be a joint activity, not from Abuja, you want me to travel to my local government in Abia to go and be talking to somebody there that this is what happened. By part, maybe I'll talk to the governor, I'll go and talk to the local government chairman, and maybe even the councillor. It, it, it doesn't work that way. Everybody should be involved. When we had COVID or had the, what the other one, Ebola, that was the way it was tackled in Nigeria. Everybody knew about it. Or recently, politics. Why can't we do the same thing? You don't leave Abuja to go and begin to police the state government to be maybe clear your drainages and uh, remove structures here and there. In the city here, it is fantastic. Maybe the only place we, nobody was, no life was lost last year. Mm. Uh, Mr. Aido, uh, let's look at the level to which you disseminate your predictions and your warning systems. Okay. He's just talked about uh, having to send the information to the state governors who are then expected to cascade down. Mm -hmm. In your own case, in, in the case of NIMETS, for instance, when you scientifically generate this information, these predictions and uh, the early warning systems, who does it go to? Okay, uh, just like uh, uh, I mentioned earlier, when we are doing the public presentation of the SCP itself, we invite actors from every state of the Federation, including the FCT, to come for the public presentation. And um, one thing we also do is that as early as possible, we make this document also available online for those who cannot make it to the public presentation. Aside that, what we do is we also have presence in every state of the Federation. There is no state in Nigeria where you will not find NIMET. And so we have officers also who are competent enough to interpret this information and relay it to the general public. Aside that, we also leverage on partnership because we know that some organizations also have structures within every state and in several sectors, as you know, whether cut across several sectors mm. of the economy. Mm. So it, we also leverage on such partnerships to take this information down in what we call downscaling of the information, perhaps to your local government, perhaps to your state level, because we have the capacity and the skill to be able to do that. In the main document itself, every local government in Nigeria is covered in that document. So every local government that assesses that document will almost immediately know how the, uh, that prediction is going Absolutely. to affect that local Absolutely. government. Absolutely. And should, in fact, take a cue from that to begin early preparation. Absolutely. What and what we have even done this year is we now have a mobile app also that also, that also provides access to this information, so apart from the website where you have these documents available. Mm. Now, uh, the aviation sector is a very critical sector when it comes to weather. Yes. How much of your uh, information or the data generated by you are they using? Oh, <laughs> well, aviation is 
In fact, if I say the one of the, uh, I don't let me rank now, but that is one sector where weather information is consumed every second. We walk round the clock in the aviation sector. You can't afford to go to sleep in the aviation sector. Why? Because weather is key to every stage of operation in any airport. Talk about takeoff of aircraft, talk about landing of aircraft, talk about air routes. Also, that's what we call the air route forecast, terminal aerodrome forecast. All this information are consumed every time you see an aircraft fly in this country. If sometime, if, in fact, before you can sight any airport, you must consume weather information first before you can sight the wrong way. Mm. That is how critical weather is in the aviation sector. Engineers, uh, let, let's get back to the uh, information that has the flood outlook that has been released by your agency. 178 local governments, highly probable, highly probable flood risk areas. Now, what, what makes them highly probable? And what makes the others not as uh, highly probable, uh, moderately probable, and less probable? We thank you. Uh, this is a, we, we, it's a whole gamut of activity, scientific uh, activity we do. At the end of the day, we try to simplify it in the way a common man, well, you're not a common man anyway, <laughs> <laughs> the layman can understand. So we try to simplify it using those terminologies. But before I get there, just like uh, my friend mentioned, we had people, we, we, had, we, we collaborated a lot with other agencies, for instance, NOA, that must be there whenever we are doing the launching, because they have the offices in all the OGS in Nigeria to disseminate the information. The NEMA also assess our information with that of NIMET, which we did now make a stake, have a stakeholders meeting involving all kinds of uh, agencies in Nigeria to come and look at what these two, NEMA is, will bring that one together. To come and look at what the two agencies, NIMET and NISA, have said in terms of uh, the implications with regard to disaster management in Nigeria. So, ha having said that, I would attempt to answer the question how do we classify an area highly probable? Now, there are more than 12 uh, input data we use in doing our prediction. We have rainfall or precipitation, we call it, which NIMET provides. We measure all the major rivers in Nigeria. We can tell you how any river is behaving in Nigeria. Rivers, Niger, Benue, a whole lot of them. We have equipment there. If we call any of our staff, maybe somewhere in Wuroboki, in Adamawa State, the first entry point where we take measurement on River Benue, we will tell you what is happening there. Uru, uh, um, Jidre Bode in Kebi State. If I call there, this is the first point we are measuring River Niger. So it enters Nigeria from Niger Republic or Benin Republic anyway. The first measurement in KB State, we know what is happening. So we measured the attributary river, uh, Sokoto, Nemde, there are a lot of them. River, um, Anambra River, Imo, Oshun, a lot of rivers. So we measured them. We know, we know the geology, the places that is rocky, we call it a basement complex. We know about the, 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 the sedimentary areas. We know about the river system, how are they connected? We talk about the, the land use pattern, the, how well a house of places are being built. So we feel this information, we use uh, about three models to do the prediction. And then these three models developed by different experts as being utilized all over the world. We take all this data I've mentioned, rainfall amount, the geology of the environment, topography, all kinds of things, the river system, the, the, the hydrograph of the river, where we take some measurements. We put this information into different, uh, like three different human beings, so to say, what we call models. And we ask them to tell us what will be the flood situation in Nigeria. That is what is used all over the world. Those models, we, we have, that's what we call geostream, geospatial stream flow model. GSPM. That's one we call soil and water assessment too. That's one health model. So we put all this data of different locations in Nigeria 
leave it to this one. Please tell us whether there will be flood on superimposed it on the map of Nigeria. Another model, we give it the same information. It's actually the same data, maybe 12 data, 12 of them. Go and cook and tell us what is going to happen in 2023. This work is begun before the end of the previous year, like 2022. Now, at the end of the day, they will plot for us and give us the whole, what, what is going to happen in Nigeria in terms of flooding. Then we'll bring the, three, the result from the three models and look, and look at them. The locations where they throw them are saying exactly the same thing. Exactly. They agree. Husband and wife. No disparity. Like, say, wife will say, my husband uses a size 8. When the husband comes back, he says, I'm using size 8. They're in agreement. There are some of those supposedly they normally do. When we say, my husband takes a goosey soup, husband will come back and say, no, what I take is a draw soup. So they don't, they don't agree. So where the models agree completely, we say this place is highly probable that we have flood here. Highly probable. So where there's a little discrepancy in the tray, maybe, maybe at, at least 80% or 70% agreement, that's against 90%. Where is about 70% agreement in the three models? We say this is a moderately probable area or risk area. Now, where they don't agree, we can conclude these particular locations in Nigeria, maybe FCT or maybe Ugogolanda, they don't agree at all, the three models. We say the flood risk is less probable. So that's the, maybe that's a kind of mm. layman's way to explain it. To explain it. So where there, the models are saying the same thing, we say the, it is highly probable. And it has never deviated from that, the, what we, we now plot it in the map and give to Nigeria. This is what you should be expecting in the course of a year. Because that's the question I was going to ask. I mean, uh, has there been a situation where there has been an exception to this probability? Where, for instance, uh, where, where you have mapped as less probable that there have been uh, a moderate or high risk. That's a very nice blood. question. We, at the end of the day, we go back to check. We talk about, say, predicted and occurred. We take record of that. Not predicted. Predicted and it occurred as predicted. We take record of it. Predicted, but not, it didn't occur. So we, we have to go back again at the drawing board to look at... Uh, because we know that we are dealing with the weather related issue, like he mentioned, that every now and every second or more or less, things keep changing. So, but the pressure we do, which we issue about flooding, likewise, nightmare, these are two that can enable any person to plan with. There may be, in the course of the year, some deviations, which if you, you can track from time to time and then update information you are giving to the general public. But it is an adequate document you can begin to do your planning with. So there could be places where we say it will be highly probable it will occur here. But at the end of the day, it may be just a moderately probable flood risk a situation. Mm. All right. Well, Mr. Adu, well, mm. well, um, we're going to go on a short break now. When we come back, I'll be taking you on, on these probability issues. Whether or not uh, in NIME's own predictions, or oh, uh, early warning uh, systems. Whether well, or not there has been some disparity, okay, you predict that there will be this volume of rainfall in this location or in that location, and it didn't occur. Let's go on that break. All right, thank you so much for staying with us. We're looking at the flood outlook for 2023 in Nigeria. And my guests are Engineer Clement Nze. He is the Director General of the Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency. And he's joined by Oluwashon Wifred Ido, who is a Technical Assistant to the Director General of the Nigeria Meteorological Agency, NIMET. Mr. Ido, has there been a situation where NIMET weather predictions have not been outrightly accurate? Um, I wouldn't use that word, outrightly inaccurate. Okay. Okay. Uh, why? Because it is a prediction in the first place. Mm -hmm. And um, globally, say when your prediction is 60% accurate, then you are good to go. However, for us in nine minutes, we've even gone up to 90% accuracy. But one thing we do is that you don't make a prediction and go to sleep. 
because there is bound to be changes day in, day out, season to season. So what we do is that we keep monitoring the prediction and the forecast that has been made. And immediately you observe that there is going to be a major deviation from what has been earlier predicted. Then you come back to inform the people that, oh, in this particular area, where we have said this is how it's going to be, this is the update on it. And so it is allowed that at, throughout the season, throughout the duration or the validity of your forecast, you can come back to update the public and to tell them this is the way it is at the moment. And that is the essence of update. And if you look at our publication, the seasonal climate prediction I talked about, there is a particular section of that document that is called evaluation of previous forecast. It is made public for people to see this is the predicted, this is how it played out. And then you see areas whereby maybe there are little differences here and there. So however, the, that is the essence of what we call in-season updates, which we do from time to time. The only difference is that we may not assemble the way we have assembled at the beginning, everybody. And that's why we have various channels whereby we tell people to watch out. We also have uh, people on our mailing list, media houses, stakeholders, uh, uh, governors, uh, ministers on our mailing list, so that once you observe that it's going to be a change, you push out information as early as possible. And we're also on all these various social media handles, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, where we also use to disseminate information it, as early it, as possible. Is it not obvious that uh, some of the information you pass on to governors don't really get to them or they do not have time to engage with them? Uh, well, he, he, he mentioned something earlier. Mm. In every state, you have the state emergency management agencies. You have Ministry of so Environment. So such, such information ought, ought to actually go to them. Of or course, we some of that them the are on our... Will pass them no, 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 some of them are on our mailing okay. list because we, we interact with some of them mm. uh, on, on daily basis, frequently, we have them on our mailing list and they get this information as early as possible. We, in fact, uh, as for nine minutes, we have even tried in the past to see how to assess the governor's forum, such that, because if they get that information and you get their buying, it will be easy to coordinate at the state level. Even when the information is coming, maybe from bottom-up uh, approach, they will have been informed about that and it will be easy to have the information disseminated. However, uh, like you mentioned earlier, at the federal level, that is at uh, the horizontal level, the relationship and the synergy is a bit excellent. It's the Vatican now that we are calling for a lot of improvement as we have observed that we cannot sit back and not take early action with all the early warnings that we are getting. It, it appears to me that there's a lot of synergy between your two organizations. Absolutely. But that synergy doesn't appear to uh, translate to reality uh, when it comes to the states and to the local government level. So what more can be done uh, at your levels to get, to get to these very vulnerable communities where in 2022 and, and they are yet to recover from it many communities are yet to recover from the devastation of the flood in in in, in 2022 even as we speak there are people who are still in uh, camps yes. internally displaced camps there are people who still cannot access even the basic necessities some of which were provided by government and for, by, by other agencies to assist these people to recover from the devastation that occurred. So what, what because from, from what we see and read every day, there are communities that are perennially, I mean every year, prone to this uh, flooding. And yet people go back after every devastation. You see, uh, thank you so much. Like uh, he mentioned about relationship horizontally, at the federal level, it's, it's been quite uh, superb. But the challenge has been vertical, getting down to the governors or states and then local governments, and actually to the grassroots, because the fraud occurs in the communities. We are, we've been working with the Nigerian Governors Forum. And once our predictions are made, 
that the DG government and the governance forum that we interact with require that we send him all these documents, he can easily disseminate information to the governors and possibly also let them know the, the, the real access of the documents being sent to them. Now, there is a, a program that is going on that has been put together by, the, by uh, NEMA, which will involve these three major agencies at the federal level. NEMA, NIMET, and NISA. That I think we've we'll we'll been having a flag off for that event in Ekiti State because of the prison that are about it. So NEMA is packaging that, that uh, program so that we can visit the state, the chief executive with some officers to drum this into the ears of uh, the state governments. And that, that will be replicated across all the states in Nigeria. So this is just a means to see that uh, information given at the federal level gets to the grassroots. If there is no buy-in into what is happening here, it, it, it will be more or, less, more or less a waste of effort at the federal level. Now, we have been calling on the state governments, not only when there is a disaster, they begin to ask for relief materials. Much could be done, like uh, maybe mention part of it. Over 65 persons died in 2022, according to NEMA. According to World Bank, we lost, Nigeria lost over $6.68 billion. Over 2 million people were displaced. I don't know how of thousands of people that were injured in the course of last year's uh, flood event. Agriculture, so much things mm. were wasted. Mm. So we, we are pleading with the state governments to look at this. Let them not waste, wait until there's a disaster. <coughs> then the state government will now vote 2 billion naira. But the 2 billion naira you are bringing out after disaster have, have occurred cannot bring, solve any major problem like bringing back life. No. Now, and it was on the basis of what we did in NISA, because at the critical period of the year, say August, September, <coughs> and early October, we briefed Mr. President on a weekly basis through the Honorable Minister of Water Resources, Mr. Suleiman Adam. We keep telling him this, what, is, what has happened so far. They said that are already under flood. These are the ones that we're expecting in the coming week. Now, based on that, Mr. President gave a, a directive Based on our report to him or memo to him <coughs> in October last year, 4th of October, Thank you. we gave him that, that, doc, that memo. And other Minister of Water Resources gave him, sent the memo to him. Then, based on that, he gave a directive to the Minister of Water Resources to bring together relevant ministers like health, environment, agriculture, and then the state governments together. 90 days was given. That committee was, the general committee was noted at the villa on the 3rd of November last year. And we're given 90 days to work, to come up with a document to see how can we bring, you know, a lasting solution to the disaster as out of a flood in Nigeria. We can't stop flood, but we can reduce the impact of the, the disaster aspect of it. So that will tell you the impact was given at the federal level. But unfortunately, on that day of the inauguration at the villa, it was only an state government that the deputy mm. governor came. Then I think Jigawa sent a Jigawa, commission yes. also. I, I don't know whether Kogi came. Mm. Apart from these three, no, no other that. government came. An governor, deputy governor was there <coughs> with some commissioners. Uh, Jigawa sent a special assistant to the governor, and I think another commissioner came. This committee met not less than maybe 20, 20 times, mm. to look at from all sectors, water resources, environment, energy, agriculture, all kinds of sectors were looked at by this committee. And later to, towards the end of the sitting, we visited the city geopolitical zones. Two major states in each zone, like uh, in the north central, Kogi and Benue. Southeast, Anambra and Imo. South-South, um, Bayesa and Rivers. 
likewise other states in Nigeria. Now, if we talk of what, how the, committee, the presidential committee was received in some states, you will say that they are not serious to do anything. I'm sorry to say that. I led the team to South South. I know how we were received in one of the states. In fact, we didn't, nobody even saw us in, when we came to Rivers. Nobody. All matters were sent earlier, months ahead of time. This day, this team will, the presidential team will arrive. Bayesa was where received us. Governor, Deputy Governor went with us to move all locations in, in Bayesa. Look at the Deputy Governor. And these were documented. We have a uh, short term, medium term, and long term. It may involve drainage of some rivers, it may barrages to all kinds of things we are articulated. But I'm, what I'm saying, there's a fair attitude of some states. The one I did, we came to rivers, nobody, we, we, not even commissioner. So it was just some officials on one local government, one listen. In fact, we had to take them to our, our, one of our agencies, Niger Delta Drug Basin. That way we met, they came to meet us, which is the federal government agency under water resources. Niger Delta Basin Development Authority, not NDDC. Niger Delta Basin is the river basin under the Ministry of Water Resources. That was where the presidential team met and a few people from the university government came to meet us there. So that is the level of impetus, we may, if I may say. Some states are called to preparedness to solve the issue of flooding in Nigeria. But when there's a disaster, don't be surprised, you say, we have given 3 billion naira to, for food and non-food items, which doesn't solve the problem. We are looking for to do physical things that will instead solve of, the problem. If, instead, instead of prevention, mm -hmm. we're yes. looking for remedy yes. when it has happened. But, but let, let me quickly ask you this, Mr. Do, uh, how much uh, climate change is actually impacting your uh, work at NIMET? Of course, uh, climate change is now a reality. It's not anything that uh, somebody will shy away from anymore. Uh, if you have been observing at the beginning of every season, the kind of gusty winds that you'll experience, sometimes you come outside of your house and you're wondering whether your roof is still there. Um, before also, um, the rainfall amount, the kind of amount of rainfall that has been received in northern part of Nigeria uh, are, are values that before now, when in fact uh, some states last year got over 200 millimeters of rainfall in 24 hours. That is massive. That is like a cumulative rainfall that should have occurred in three months uh, in the past. So uh, that is evidence of climate change. It is there. And so uh, it it's now calls on us now as a service provider, as a forecasting agency, to be on our toes, to be able to observe these changes on time and then warn the public, because that is why we are there. That is why we are being funded to work. So uh, it is real. It is real. However, we have the skill, uh, we have the, the, the knowledge, and we have the data, if I may mention, we have the data as well. To, to do this work. This is not climate prediction that we do. The amount of volume of data that goes into that is massive. Some of them over uh, uh, 60 years of data, over 40 years of data, and more, depending on the location in the country. If you may know, the, the, the first weather station in Nigeria was in Akasa by Sa State, and it was in 1884. So that's a long time ago. And we have so many stations like that. That's over 100 years of data. So with this volume of data, you can easily detect and confirm that there is climate change in Nigeria. And luckily this year, we also published a book on climate change, an indigenous book also, which is also available on our website, free of charge for Nigerians, for students, for researchers, for institutions to look at, using local information as evidence of climate change. And we also look at mitigation, adaptation measures in that book as mm. well. All right, uh, engineers, uh, this is a subject matter that we cannot finish trashing in one hour. So I may have to bring you back at some other time to come and look at 
in more detail the, the, this flooding occurrences because we, we, we talked about uh, coastal flooding, flash flooding, urban flooding, river and riverine flooding. Uh, flooding. These different types of flooding, we need to come back to talk about where they occur and when they are possibly likely to occur at some other time. I want to thank you immensely for finding time to join thank, us today. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, uh, Engineer Clement Inze, Director General of the Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency. Thank you very much. Thank and you. he's been joined by Mr. Uluwashion Wifred Ido, who is the Technical Assistant to the Director General of the Nigeria Meteorological Agency, NIMET. Thank, thank you, you so much. Me. Thank you so coming. much. All right, that's our program for today. Uh, you got the message, uh, the predictions, and the forecast from NIMED and from NISA are very scientifically made, and they give us early warnings about what to expect in 2023 during this rainy season. We must avoid the mistakes of 2022 and 2012. We must ensure that we do not uh, get ourselves into this kind of tight corner that we usually find ourselves when uh, this kind of devastation caused by floods do occur. We have experienced it in one way or the other, and there is need to begin to take more proactive measures to uh, solve the situation. Do have yourself a wonderful time for the rest of the week. We'll see you again when we bring you a fresh edition of the program, People, Politics and Power. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.